Hello, I'm Danny Wilson. Uh, you're joining us today at Branch of Fisheries at Bolton uh, on Lake 2, Peg 2. We're targeting anything today, mainly roach. We're catching roach, we're catching hide, we're catching up and down in the water. We're having a good day's fishing, we're getting a bite of shark. Branches itself, um, it's been here, it's been here a long, long time. Uh, it's a commercial itself, but it's not your tradition. It's more of a traditional commercial. It's not. Uh, it's not a dugout commercial. It sold all, all, all small reservoirs, really. Um, dead clear water, full of roach, full of full of hide, full of skimmers, full of everything. Lovely, lovely for get bites on a winter's day. Match weights and stuff like that. What you can expect here, they, they go upwards of thirty pound. Um, there have been a couple of matches last last couple of days. We're here on a Monday today. Uh, Saturday, Sunday weights they were 33, 34 pound. All roach mainly, a few hide mixed in. Um, but you could have some real, real red letter days on here. You can catch 60 pound of hide. You could catch, you could you could turn up and catch 100 pound of hide um, on a lot of different methods. You could catch them on a waggly. You could catch them on a pole like we are doing today. Shallow in January. What more could you want? You start on a waggler usually, um, feeding it long. Well, as long as you could, you could fire bait. Basically, you can fish 20 meters, just a, probably a little bit past. Um, but you normally catch your better fish and your bigger fish early on. You could catch a few wide, what'll bump your weight up in a match. Um, but yeah, you're getting a bite. You're getting a bite every time you go in, really. So you're either catching a big roach, eight ounce, or you're catching an hide upwards of three pounds. Some of them, massive fish, but you're getting a lot of bites. So that's all that all that matters. You find when you've got you've got a match on this place, a lot of the a lot of the bigger fish or the the worrier fish would sit off. So that's why you can pick them up on a waggler if you're on the right peg for it, uh, where they sit sit out in the middle. Um, but yeah, you're catching a lot of catching a lot of roach and stuff on your pole lines as well. Um, but the wagglers the wagglers are the one sometimes for catching your better fish early on until your pole lines get going. The feed of the waggler line with um, casters mainly. Casters just because you get the distance and you get a bit better grouping. Um, but yeah, as long as you can feed accurately and, and comfortably long, not not stretching yourself. Um, but yeah, we feed casters a lot. Um, you could probably get away with feeding maggots if the wind was behind you, but a lot of it's caster, casters um, on, a, on a waggler line. Uh, we're fishing the waggler today, but we're fishing it at, at what I would say is probably just a bit more than half depth. Um, you're probably looking, you've got 9, 10 foot, maybe 12 foot in the middle. Um, we're fishing a waggler at probably 5 foot, something like that. So you're fishing it with next to no shot down your line, a couple of number 10s and stuff like that. But a, and a good size hook, a 16 hook and stuff like that with double and single maggot. And yeah, you're catching them through the water. That catching them through the water where you're feeding. Um, you're getting a lot of water back. We're fishing a pole line today at 13 metres. Well, 13, 13 metres with a dolly butt. Um, started off the peg by feeding at 13 metres without the dolly. Um, fed a little little nugget of worms and stuff like that. Um, and then we've got we've put the dolly on and fished just behind where you where you've initially fed. Uh, and then we started loose feeding casters over the top of it and the peg just got better and better. I fed one little tiny nugget of ground bait, um, just enough really to hold some worms and casters together. It, it tends to bring the fish straight in your peg, but there's a lot of fish in front of us and it just con concentrates them a little bit and then you, you're feeding with a catapult over the top of it and finding out what layers they're at really and catching them from there. Loose feeding casters on the pole line. Um, not filling it in with casters on the pole line but you, you're feeding regular you're feeding little and often 
um, pinch eight, ten casters, stuff like that when you when you're feeding it when when they're actually feeding in your peg. Uh, but yeah, we're catching catching a lot of fish through the water at the minute. We're catching a lot of fish on a light rig. at probably half depth now, which for a January day is is awesome. We've started off on a gram rig with an olivet, three droppers underneath it. Probably your olivet's probably two foot up from your hook. Um, started on that at dead depth, had a few fish, but as soon as you start feeding castles over the top of it, the fish are hungry. They tend to start looking up and wanting to feed. Um, so then we've got another rig at probably 10 inches, 12 inches off the deck where we've caught a few fish. And then we've got another rig shallower than that at probably five foot with a bit of a long lash where we can adjust that up and down to find where the fish are feeding basically in them upper layers but catching a lot of roach at the minute and an odd hide underneath them which is making for good fishing. Uh, we started off on the gram rigs we've got uh, the six to eights the, the zip hybrid six to eights in the yellow uh, just because it's got a little bit more backbone than the fours to sixes for when you're when you're striking through a big float basically if you've got a gram rig on and stuff like that you want a, you want a, an elastic in your pole what'll what'll look the fish properly so we started off on a four on a six to eights um the shallower rigs and the lighter rigs we've got fours to sixes just so that when you are hooking a bigger roach or you're hooking a bigger hide you want them to you want them to nod and go out your peg basically so that you're not you're not spooking the rest of the fish all my elastics are through a top a top two or a top two now with a puller um, apart from one, one what I have got set up, which is the, the shallower rig of the two, um, which is only through a number one section, which is the four to six is zip, the, the hybrid one. Um, but that just gives you a little bit, a bit more backbone. Um, it's still coming out when you're striking. It's still, you've still got the softness, you've still got the cushion, but when you are swinging roach in and stuff like that, it's a lot quicker. So you can make a few more fish in your net. When we're fishing shallow, um, obviously you've, you're fishing through a column of bait in the water, so you want to be feeding, lifting your rig up, dropping it in. Try, if you can, or if you can get in, in the rhythm of it, is swinging your rig out past your stuff and letting your rig fall back into your stuff. Usually, if you can do that, you will catch an odd better fish behind where you're feeding. Today, we're feeding casters. Um, so what we've, been, what we've been doing, we've been fishing either a caster on the hook, a single caster, or if the bites go a bit finicky or shy, we've, we've been mixing it up and putting an head of a worm on it, nipping it off so you've got a quarter of an inch of worm, so it's mimicking a caster basically, but you do get a couple more bites of the cherry in, in striking wise and catching a few more fish with that. But caster today has been by far the best bait. We've been catching a fishy chuck on it, we've been catching a roach a chuck, like I say, we've, we've had some hide mixed in on the pole, but mainly on the waggler line they had. But we've caught a lot of roach and some big roach at that. 